All right, so if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in these guys. These are the Jabra Elite 10 Gen 2. It's kind of a mouthful. And this is Jabra's Hail Mary attempt at making the best buds that ever existed on the market in 2024 at least. Essentially, Jabra took all the best features and crammed it into these buds as a last hoorah because they're actually disbanding their consumer department. That means that potentially these buds are not gonna get the support that other buds get in terms of firmware updates, but because these have every feature you can think of crammed into them, they might be a viable option. So I figured I'd pick these up, make this video and answer some questions. Should you pick up the Jabra Elite 10 Gen 2? Are the improvements that they made actually worth it? Do I even like these buds? Because I'm gonna be honest, I was super critical when I reviewed the first generation of these. I wasn't a fan of that liquid silicone coating. So yeah, we're gonna do a quick unboxing. We're gonna go over the specs, maybe a comparison, and we're gonna answer that question. And of course, if it's your first time here, my name's Fredo. I'm a hybrid actor here in New York City. That means I run and box some of the yoga analytic weights. And I test these buds on the train, loud noises, babies crying, crazy noise, people trying to kill me. You know the spiel. So you can trust me when I tell you if the buds are good or not, because if they can't survive New York City, they're probably not worth the money. But yeah, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so here we go. I've got the Jabra Lee 10 Gen 2s. We're gonna do a quick unboxing. Obviously, they're outside of the box. I've tested these already. But we're gonna show you what's inside. And it took me a while to get these because I wanted to get this white colorway. This is like their newest color. That makes sense. You've got a bunch of little silicone tips. I use the ones that come with the buds already, which is I think their medium pair. They fit pretty good. Here you've got that 3.5 to USB-C cable. It's in the cream colorway, which kind of kind of lame, honestly, but I guess it has to match the case. The case is super nice. It fits my palm test, super slim. I'm a little bit worried about how well this case will hold up over time, like if it gets stained with the color of my jeans or something like that. But overall, nice cases. It's almost as small as the AirPod case, just marginally bigger, but not in any way that matters. And here I've got the Technics AZ-80s. They're also marginally taller, but not as wide the depth of them and then here you go here are the buds now i've reviewed the gen ones before and the buds the silicone is not my favorite if you can't tell or if you don't know if you've never held these before these are a liquid silicone finish so it makes them really soft to the touch which kind of makes them a little slippery the buds are a, an interesting shape they're like a teardrop shape they have like an ergonomic like triangle silicone piece right here and actually if i take it off you'll see what i mean about that triangle So yeah, they're very unique. They have like that triangle opening. You can use third party tips on this, but honestly, I don't think it's necessary. These tips are already really good. You've got the silver part right there, which is where your buttons are. And the buds are small. They fit in your ear really nice. So that's your quick unboxing of the Jabra Elite 10 Gen 2. We're gonna go over the specs and we'll do another top-down comparison with some other buds. But let's talk about the actual usability of these things. But yeah, when it comes to the Gen 2s, the case is super nice. It passes my palm test. It is slim, it is minimal, it is compact. It fits in my running shorts. And of course you've got USB-C charging on the bottom, wireless charging on the back. And then you have a little button that gives you that retransmission feature. If you don't know what that means, you can essentially take a 3.5 millimeter cable, plug it into your legacy device or an airplane or anything like that. Here's my old iPod. And you can transmit the audio from something like this. Cool feature to have. The only competitor that has that is the Bowers & Wilkins PI7s and the Bowers & Wilkins PI8s, which are a little bit pricey. When it comes to battery life, the case is going to give you 36 hours and the actual buds, which I'll show you right now, the buds are going to give you about six hours each. As you can tell, these guys still have that liquid silicone design. I'm not a fan of because the fit just doesn't work. They slip out of my ears. Your experience may vary. And I'll put them in my ear too, just so you have a perspective. There you go. They're in my ear. I really do like the look. Going over the specs, you have a 10 millimeter driver. Spoiler alert, I like the way these buds sound. I actually like bop my head to the music when I have these in. You've got Bluetooth 5.3 with multi-point connectivity, an IP rating of IP57, which is great for working out. And technically these buds are great for working out because they also have that physical button on there, which means you can control your music, your play, your pause, your fast forward, your ANC very easily, no accidental, no accidental touches. I think that's pretty much it when it comes to the specs. So they are improved and they made some tweaks to the ANC and the hear through mode. They're apparently vastly improved. I'm going to be honest with you. The ANC, the noise canceling is actually really good, but it all depends on the type of seal that you're able to get with these buds. They have a very unique triangle shaped ear tip, which you might love or you might hate. It works for me, but it doesn't have a passive seal. The ANC is actually really good though. It doesn't give you that occlusion feeling like suffocating compression because they're open back design. Also, when it comes to the aware mode, the transparency mode, it's vastly improved as well. It's weird because 
because when I have these in my ear, I kind of hear my own voice a little weird, but I'm able to have full conversations. So it's not perfect, but it is more than usable. So yeah, when it comes down to it, these buds are vastly improved. They have all the features you can want and the sound quality. The sound quality is amazing. I was on the train and I caught myself bopping my head to old songs, new songs, really enjoying my music. And I'm not sure what it is about these buds, but I think it really has to come down to the sound stage. Things just sound really wide and open. You feel like you're at a concert with these buds. And that's why I'm super disappointed that I have to return these because it's the fit. Just like the Gen 1s, the Gen 2s have that stupid silicone coating and that thing does not work for me. It literally feels like the bud is constantly slipping out, even if it's not actually slipping out. And this is with me not doing any extraneous activities. I'm not running. I'm just like sitting down on the train, standing up on the train, enjoying my music. And the buds just slowly creep out even throughout this video. Like once I push them in, especially this left ear, it just slowly pops out. And if you can see, but this bud just kind of hangs out. It's not that great. So yeah, yeah, that's just my opinion. I have other people in my comment section that swear by the Jabberly 10 Gen 2s. They love these guys. They think they're the best earbuds either. The Gen 1s were great. The Gen 2s are great too. But when it comes down to it for me, it's not worth having an earbud that I constantly am worried about. It's slipping out of my ear. And also, I don't care about that retransmission feature. It's nice to have. It's a cool idea. But the truth is, is that the day you forget the cable is the day you can't use that feature. And then the day that you need it. And then at that point, I already have earbuds that I travel with. I have the momentum fours that have the special airplane cable anyway. So there you go. So like I said, I'll be returning the Jabra Elite 10 Gen 2s. I'm glad that I tried them out. I'm glad that I can give you guys this information. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I respond to 70% of the questions you guys leave, at least intelligent ones. Watch my channel because I have reviews of every major earbud you can think of. Go check that out. Probably an updated version for 2024. Like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one. Let me show you what they look like against AirPods because everybody has a pair of AirPods. It is like if you took the AirPod, got rid of the stem and made the bud part just a little bit, just drop that and just made it a little bit fatter, kind of like a bean. And then this soft white is almost like a cream color, honestly, compared to like the pure clinical white of the AirPods. So here they are against the Jabra's. As you can see, the Jabra's are, they look very similar, honestly, on camera. They look like they share a lot of uh, the same shape and depth, but the Jabra has like this bulbous part that sits in your concha, which is nice and comfortable. The Jabra one is more sleek, but also has that like concha piece right there. It's just subtle. It's hard to see with the white. I don't know where I'm going to throw this in the video, but I just want to show you guys real quick. These are the Browns and Wilkins PI-8s. These are the last generation. They're the newest ones that just came out. Essentially, what I believe is that Browns and Wilkins bought the Gen 2 designs and just changed a couple things and co-opted them because both of these products have a similar size case with an audio tr retransmission feature, right? With buds that I think have similar size drivers too. The Browns and Wilkins are definitely more premium looking and they don't have a capacitive button and then they have a capacitive button, not a touch button. The similarities between these two buds are so close that I swear to God that they white labeled the technology from Jabra to make their premium buds. So essentially you can buy these Jabra Elite 10 Gen 2s for $100, $200 cheaper than these and still get the same features. Maybe not the same sound quality. You got to play with the EQ, but if you want that transmission feature, this is how you get it. So just to show you real quick, these are the two buds side by side and they share so much similarities. This one has more like a wing. My conclusion is, is that if you want the retransmission feature, get the Jabra Elite 10 Gen 2s. But if you just want good headphones that sound really nice and don't break the bank, the PI6 are an amazing purchase as well. Look at those two side by side. White labeling at its finest.